One thing that I pray for myself is that I would see the value of knowing Christ as better than anything else in this world. And so for our brothers and sisters that encounter persecution, that they would know the value of knowing Christ is so much greater than anything that they could have in this world. And if even if they lose all that they may have in this world, that they would know knowing Christ is, is worth it. Jesus never promised his followers an easy path. In fact, he told his disciples that the world would hate them. He sent them out as sheep among wolves. Jesus' words came true in the life of the apostles, and they're still coming true today in the lives of his followers around the world. Join host Todd Nettleton as we hear their inspiring stories and learn how we can help right now on The Voice of the Martyrs Radio Network. Welcome again to The Voice of the Martyrs Radio. My name is Todd Nettleton. We're in the studio today in Bartlesville, Oklahoma with Carter Gates. Carter is the regional leader for Asia Pacific here at The Voice of the Martyrs, so overseeing all VOM projects and work in the Asia Pacific region, which is really quite a massive span of the globe. Carter, welcome back to Voice of the Martyrs Radio. Thanks, Todd. It's always good to be here with you. It is great to have you, and uh, I happen to have a copy of the March VOM magazine, which will be in people's mailboxes here in a few weeks. And it has a story about Brunei. Brunei is a country I don't think we've ever talked about, uh, but they have just instituted mandatory Islamic training for all children, including Christian children, one hour of Islamic education every day of the week. Talk to me about this law, but then sort of broadly, what does it mean to be a Christian in Brunei? So yes, Brunei is a small country in Southeast Asia. It's on the island of Borneo. It's surrounded by Malaysia. It's an absolute monarchy. So it's one of the few or maybe the only left in the world. Whatever the king says goes. The The king is, is Muslim. Uh, the majority of the nation of Brunei is Muslim. And so what comes with that is that they're wanting to incentivize Muslim teaching through all schools, and the king has all power and authority to require that. So this was something that we heard about and we uh, learned about recently. The only schools in the country, from what we understand, that are not impacted by this are international schools, uh, but the private and public schools are required. And, you know, and we have heard stories from Brunei of those that are aware of the local school system to where you will have Christian families, because there are Christians in Brunei. Mm-hmm. Uh, you will have Christian families where maybe they don't have the means to send their kids to a private school or something like this with less influence of Islamic teaching. Uh, so they're in the public schools where their their children, specifically their girls, are still required to wear the head coverings. They're still required to, to follow certain aspects of the school curriculum that are Islamic. And so, yeah, it's it's definitely a challenge to be a Christian in that context where you don't have a voice, even if you do not agree with this new law, uh, whatever the king says goes. And so it's not an easy place to be a Christian in some aspects. We're talking this week on Voice of the Martyrs Radio with Carter Gates. He is the regional leader for Asia Pacific here at the Voice of the Martyrs. Carter, China is is in your region. China is is everybody's big brother or big uncle trying to look over their shoulders. What is happening as far as VOM work in China? Because I know things have gotten more challenging. It's become more closed. It's harder to be a Christian there. Um, certainly harder as an outsider to do anything in mm. the country. What is it like for our workers who are trying to stand beside Chinese Christians right now? I feel so honored to have the job that I have, and because one of the things I get to do is just get to spend time with Christians that live in these contexts and in the countries where uh, we as an organization are able to minister. And and like you said, China is like the big elephant in the room. Whenever you think of the persecuted church, people think of China globally. And one thing I love about the church in China is that the challenges that the Christians and the church has faced there over the last few years, and even recently in 2023, they don't shrink back from those things. Uh, With the challenges they face, whether it's local uh, regulations, more intrusive surveillance, they don't shrink back. They just become more creative. And so that's one thing I love about our brothers and sisters in China in the work that we're able to do there, our work has not slowed down. I would just say our work has become more creative because thankfully the the Chinese Communist Party is unable to stop the movement and the growth of God's kingdom and people coming to faith there. And our brothers and sisters in China and the church there definitely are examples of that. Amen. What are some stories that you're hearing from brothers and sisters there about about what that looks like, how, how they're putting that into practice 
in spite of the government's desire that the church go away or the church completely capitulate to communist ideology. So it obviously depends on where you're at in the country. If you would have gone to a house church in the early 2000s in China, it would have felt like an open free church that you would even picture here in the U.S. That's definitely changed throughout most of China and pretty much all of China. So they're becoming more creative. They're, They're meeting in smaller groups. They recognize there's greater risk with gathering together, uh, but they see that the risk is worth it. Church leaders are finding creative means to uh, to meet together, uh, creative means into finding space to meet together, um, and meeting together in smaller groups. Some places in China are a little more difficult and more sensitive security-wise than others. But I was talking to uh, someone I know uh, inside the country recently, and he had traveled to another part of the country to visit a pastor. And after he had returned home, this person I, w- um, I spoke to, the pastor he had visited in another city had brought, been brought in for some interrogation. And unfortunately, those that were connected to this pastor were also being brought in for, for tea, as they call it in China, <laughs> uh, when the police invite yes. you in for tea. And so I was talking with the person that I know, and I was just, you know, I was asking him, making sure, hey, are you ready? Do you have things in your home that maybe shouldn't be there just in case if the police show up? You know, talking through those contingency plans. We're regularly considering those things in our line of work. His response to me, it just gives you a glimpse as the faith, the generational faith that's been passed down to throughout the church in China. And his response to me was, when I was little, my mother taught me three preparations. And those three preparations was always be ready to preach, always be ready to pray, always be ready for martyrdom. Wow. So I think it's encouraging for me to see the reality that our brothers and sisters live under there, but they continue to persevere and they don't cause it to allow them to shrink back. You're listening to the Voice of the Martyrs Radio, Carter. We just a few weeks ago we had Joe Handley from A3, and he talked about Chinese Christians. And I love in your story, my mother taught me, meaning yeah. this has come down yes. to me from Christians who have been persecuted. Mm-hmm. They their generation went to jail. They mm-hmm. got beaten by the police, and they have taught us. So we're ready for our turn when that time comes. Are there ways that VOM is helping to pass on some of those things? I mean, even right now Mm -hmm. we're telling the story, so we're passing it on to American Christians and to Christians around the world. Are there some other ways that you and your team is saying, hey, we need to help prepare? And Mm. and part of that, obviously, is is telling the stories. Mm -hmm. One of the big works of ours in China is Bible distribution. The Chinese government— has made it more and more difficult for people to have access to the Bible, whether that's digitally or a physical Bible. And so we have made it a part of our priority is to make sure Scripture is easily accessible to our brothers and sisters there, specifically in the house churches, recognizing it comes with greater risk for them to step out to get the Word of God, especially in some areas of the country. It's becoming almost more impossible to access it. If you're in a bigger city, uh, it's maybe more readily available. So we're trying to focus on getting Scripture out to the more rural areas mm-hmm. of the country. And obviously, we we believe the Word of God is something that's passed on. We want to instill the faith into our children, into the generation after us. And what better way to do that other than through the Word of God? But I would say a prayer point, and I've shared this in the past radio broadcasts, is you know the Chinese government, one thing they've been really good at, the Chinese government is very smart. And they have actually made it in the enforcement of children not being allowed to attend church continues to be a challenge. And one thing that's been very difficult is one passion of ours at VOM is to get children's biblical resources available to the church. And right now we are struggling to get access to children's resources to the church there. And so that would be a prayer that I would ask our listeners to pray for, because we would really like to make that available. And that is a request we regularly get asked Mm -hmm. if we can help the church get those sorts of resources. And as you mentioned, that that certainly is a priority for the communist government, the next generation, Yes, um, not having them have biblical resources so that they can fill them up with communist resources. I would invite our listeners and encourage our listeners to pray specifically about that need As Carter mentioned, we have to be more creative now than we did maybe five years ago or 10 years ago. So just pray for creative opportunities to deliver especially children's Bibles into the country of China. We're talking this week on Voice of the Martyrs Radio with Carter Gates. He is the Asia-Pacific Regional Leader here at the Voice of the Martyrs USA. 
Carter, I started last year uh, spending some time with some pastors from Laos, um, hearing their stories. Uh, we broadcast several of their stories here on Voice of the Martyrs Radio. People can find those in the archives or in the podcast stream. I know you had a chance to visit with some Laotian Christians just recently mm. and heard some really amazing stories of, of faithfulness. Yeah, so Laos is one of my favorite countries to travel to uh, that's in our region. And, you know, something that as I've been traveling there with VOM that I've been regularly encouraged and challenged by is how God seems to be moving amongst young people in the country and drawing them to himself and more and more young people are being bold and living out their faith and bold to the point where they're they're encountering persecution, but they're overcoming and enduring persecution and becoming more uh, faithful to the gospel. Uh, so one story that I specifically heard uh, over a recent trip earlier this year was about a young girl who came to faith due to some foreign missionaries living near her. And uh, they shared the gospel with her, and they gave her a copy of the Bible, and she would come to their house and read it because she was too fearful to take it home. And uh, eventually, it came to a point where the foreign missionaries needed to return back to their home country. And so her idea, this was the the young girl's idea, was how about I bury the Bible in, in your yard, and I'll sneak out here at night and read it when everyone's asleep. <laughs> and at this time, she was a young teenager. She yeah. was very young. Um, when I got to meet her this year, this was a, a couple years before, she's now 16. And it so humbled me thinking of where was I at my faith and my hunger yes. for the word at that age in my own life. But thankfully, how the story went on is that uh, another local family was able to stay in the missionary's home while they went back to their home country. And this, this young local girl could come and spend time with these local <laughs> believers and continue to read the Bible. But her family, this young girl, her family eventually found out about her faith, and she's endured. Her family has dragged her out of their home by pulling her hair. Uh, they've not fed her at times. They've stopped taking her to school. And she lives in an area where it's not walkable to get to the school. So by her family refusing to take her equates to not investing into her education. And so she's faced a lot of hardships. But when I met her, her joy in the Lord and her faith continues to be strong to the point that she's involved in a local church plant uh, that's wow. there in the city. And it's one of the first churches to be planted in the city limits in this one city in Laos. And, and what I love about this church, it was mainly made up of young people, I would say 20-somethings. Uh, there's obviously a few older people in there, but the majority of the church is 20-somethings. And uh, my background is working with YWAM, so I always just get so excited and thrilled <laughs> to see young people uh, going after God like that. And But what was so encouraging and challenging about this young church is that they recognize as a church plant, the time has come where they needed to grow. Uh, the core team of the church plant had gotten strong. So now they were at a turning point and they knew because they're in an area of Laos where there's very few Christians and they knew that in order for their church to grow, they need to start sharing the gospel more boldly. But what they know will happen is persecution. So the wrestling that comes with that, because I think, you know, with all the stories um, we share about our brothers and sisters in Christ that are so faithful and they overcome persecution and they seem like heroes of the faith, what we often forget, they're still human. Mm -hmm. They still have fears. They still have anxieties. They still have these emotions that we experience. And so they're wrestling with these things as they're trying to decide, how do we share the gospel? And I was so encouraged by be giving the opportunity because these are believers in a rural area of Laos who don't know much about the world outside of Laos other than what they may see on social media or the internet. And so I was able to give them stories of other Christians I know in other parts of Asia Pacific or other parts of the world that, that VOM has worked with, the hearing and sharing the stories of how they have overcome persecution and the challenges they faced and how God was faithful to be with them and, and looking at scripture to talk about how does God view persecution and how we should view persecution. And, you know, it's, it's, I'm always this internal strife I have as an American sharing these things and as someone that has lived a life without any persecution in the way that our brothers and sisters we minister to have. And, and so I have this wrestling, but I'm giving them the word of God. I'm giving them scripture. I'm mm -hmm. giving them the stories of my brothers and sisters. So like we encourage our listeners by telling these stories for them to be more bold and faithful in their walk with Christ. It was encouraging to see our, our local brothers and sisters in Laos were encouraged by those same stories. And one of the cool things about Voice of the Martyrs Radio is it is listened to all over the world. Yeah. 
Uh, our podcast, if you look at our podcast map, it includes countries like Laos and Iran and China and some of those that we've talked about. I'm also struck by that church coming to the point of, hey, things are going well, we're happy, things are good. If we're going to grow, we need to share our faith, and that's going to make us uncomfortable. Mm. Maybe that's an only a challenge for me, but I suspect there's some listeners who may think, oh, yeah, mm, that that might apply to me as well. How do we pray for Christians in Laos? Because, like you mentioned, the the pressure is often at the family level. Mm. It is mm-hmm. your dad. It's your parents. Mm. It's your brothers and sisters and cousins who say, okay, we're not going to take you to school. You can't get an education. Okay, you can't live with us anymore. You don't have a house here. How do we pray for, and I'm thinking especially of young people who are mm-hmm. going through that kind of, okay, what does my life look like if I follow Jesus versus all the opportunities I have with my family and business and education if I don't follow Jesus? The The scripture Philippians 3, 8 says, Indeed, I count everything as lost because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ. And I think one thing that we can pray for, and I think it's a prayer for ourselves that that I pray for myself, is that I would see the value of knowing Christ as better than anything else in this world. And so for our brothers and sisters that encounter persecution, that they would know the value of knowing Christ is so much greater than anything that they could have in this world. And if even if they lose all that they may have in this world, that they would know knowing Christ is, is worth it. Because, like I said, we're human. We have those moments of weakness that we need the empowerment of the Holy Spirit to help us. And I also think of, you know, the scripture in Ephesians where Paul asked the church for boldness for himself. He asked the church to pray for him to be bold. And we look at Paul as someone that's an exemplary person <laughs> of boldness. Right. And and knowing that even Paul asked the church to pray for that. So, so that would be what I would say, pray for the church to be bold, to not shrink back, to know that Christ is with them, that he will not forsake them, that uh, they will overcome eventually, no matter what trials they may face. Amen. We're talking this week on Voice of the Martyrs Radio with Carter Gates. He is the Asia-Pacific Regional Leader here at the Voice of the Martyrs. Carter, before I let you go, I want to talk about one more country, and that's Myanmar. Um, We don't talk a lot about Myanmar. There has been civil unrest, Mm -hmm. warfare, fighting going on in the country. What is that meaning for Christians and for Christian witness in in Myanmar right now? Yeah, so if anyone follows global news, it's something that's uh, unfortunately kind of buried towards the bottom now with all the other things we have happening in our world, but something that continues to happen in Myanmar is, an, is a civil war that's taking place since a, a political coup that happened in February of 2021. What this has meant for our Christian brothers and sisters is that uh, we continue to see the normal, regular uh, Christian persecution uh, that's more village level or radical Buddhist monasteries that are coming against the local churches. We're not seeing any federal level persecution, but we are seeing significant rise of just general suffering amongst our brothers and sisters in Christ is what we would say. They're living in a war zone, so their churches are being bombed, not because of them being Christian, but their churches are being bombed because they're living in a war zone. Mm -hmm. And so I would say uh, be praying for our brothers and sisters there. Thankfully, our team, they continue to be faithful and take great risk to serve those that have actually endured persecution, to distribute Bibles, to do the work um, that we feel called to do as an organization but it's becoming very difficult. There has been some recent events over the last month that has really showed a sign that the military government is weakening and struggling to to keep back some of these military and um, tribal armies. Some of these tribal armies historically have fought one another, but they are now unifying against this military government. I mean, ultimately, I think those that are against the military government would want them to succeed, but I would say the future of Myanmar is still up in the air because even if they would do that, would that equal peace? And I think if we look at the history of Myanmar, that is not exactly the expectation. Mm -hmm. So yeah, be praying for the church there. They're definitely in a season of suffering Mm -hmm. where we are watching it closely and expecting it to increase in 2024. Carter, are there any things in Asia Pacific as you look to 2024, are there, are there some things that that are 
high on your prayer radar as far as, wow, this is a huge challenge that we face this year? We have definitely been in a season, as you mentioned earlier, over the last few years of regularly just lifting our brothers and sisters in China up. The Chinese government definitely is continuing to make things more restrictive and difficult in the country. The surveillance just continues to get more invasive, so be praying for that. Um, I would say all of our other fields, um, they're always facing some challenges, you know, Vietnam, you know, there there's current meetings. This is being recorded in December. And right now, the Xi Jinping, the president of China, is now meeting with the leader of Vietnam, the leader of the Communist Party in Vietnam. So then there's always some fears. Vietnam being a communist country that borders China, Vietnam regularly wants to grow warm relations with the West for economic purposes. But I would say ideologically, they still want to be aligned with China because they're both communist. Uh, so some people fear that Will Vietnam follow China in right. some of these strict cr- you, crackdowns? You hope that Xi Jinping is not sharing his ideas about Christian persecution while, yes. while he's visiting. Yes. So I would say be praying f- be praying for that as well. Yeah. There is one other story that just really impacted me that I heard recently in one of the fields that I won't share for security. It was a local pastor that's uh, serving a congregation, and this pastor really has a heart to reach uh, the unreached in in his nation. Uh, but reaching the unreached in his nation comes with great risk. And he he shared with me that, you know, he and his, his immediate family has a, a plan. He checks in with his wife every 24 hours. And if his wife doesn't hear from him within 24 hours, if he's not responsive to his phone, then that means something has happened to him. And he has created a contingency plan with it for his wife and his children to escape to a safe place. And I think that just gives a glimpse into the reality of what our brothers and sisters live under. You know, in a lot of parts, and even in America, we may feel, I can be a Christian quite comfortably, but there's a line that is in the sand that when I choose to cross, whether that's sharing my faith, whether it's even identifying as a Christian, whatever it might be, it's a line that once you cross, it's very hard to come back. Mm-hmm. Um, and once you cross that line, there comes risk. And I'm always humbled to learn from our brothers and sisters that are regularly crossing that line with joy because they see that Christ is worth it. And I think about uh, that marriage relationship. Like, like literally, if you don't hear from me in 24 hours, I want you to get on a plane and get out of Like, I yes. run, for, grab your bags and run. It would be interesting to know how that impacts their relationship, because obviously there's that strain, but there's also that constantly praying for each other because you know you're at risk, and there's that we're in this together feeling that would build a sense of community and build the the strength and the bond between husband and wife. It's hard for us to even fathom living that way. Like what happens when it's like hour 23 and you haven't heard? Yes, it's like I mentioned earlier, it's the, our brothers and sisters, they're human. So they have these emotions where while that living out their faith in that way, it's, you know, I think the Holy Spirit empowers them. We have proof of this. We see it in scripture. We see it in real life, regularly here at VUM by those that we meet around the world. But there is this underlying anxiety and, and fear. But we often, as I love, I think I first heard John Piper say it, we have to preach the gospel to ourselves. We have to remind ourselves the truth in which we're living for and letting that overcome and, and, and be greater than the fear we may have. And I think that's, uh, I imagine that's what they have to do in their relationship and, and, and in these contexts in which our brothers and sisters are living. I hope that uh, this week you will pray for our Christian brothers and sisters in the Asia-Pacific region, uh, especially those we've talked about. We've mentioned several countries, Brunei and China and Laos and Myanmar And I I hope you will pray. In fact, I'd love to hear from you at our website, vomradio.net. You can send me a note. Let me know. Maybe one of those countries in particular you are praying for this week. I would love to hear that. Love to hear who and how you are praying. Again, that website, vomradio.net. Our guest this week has been Carter Gates. Carter, thank you again for sharing with us, lighting up our prayer list, helping us understand what our brothers and sisters in Asia Pacific are facing. Thanks, Todd, for the invitation. It's always a joy to be here and share stories from a part of the world that's very special to me. I always look forward to our conversations. 
If you are just joining us, you can hear this entire conversation with Carter Gates at our website, vomradio.net. You can also find the Voice of the Martyrs Radio wherever you listen to podcasts. And I hope you'll be back with us next week. We are going to pay a visit to Nigeria and hear about what God is doing there, how God is at work, uh, especially among the widows and the children of Christians who have been martyred for their faith. That conversation is coming up next week right here on the Voice of the Martyrs Radio Network.